What's up tubers? Teal here, Simplistic Fishing. Coming back at you tonight to continue our lake breakdown series of Grand Lake, Oklahoma. We are actually on our fourth offshore hotspots video. It's crazy to think that we're already at four offshore hotspots videos for this lake, but we have found a ton of good stuff and hopefully you guys are taking advantage of it. If you missed the lake breakdowns before this video, don't worry. Go out to our lake breakdown playlist, or I guess I should have said the videos. Go out to our lake breakdown playlist. You'll find those videos out there and you can get caught up on where we are on Grand Lake. So let's go ahead and see if we can finish this one out tonight. Here we go, Grand Lake Offshore Hotspots. Bye. Here we are back on Grand Lake of the Cherokees, hopefully on our last offshore video that we'll, we'll do, uh, using the Navionics mobile app to look at the contours of the lake and pick out the high percentage areas of where you guys should be looking for the bass from an offshore perspective. So if you missed any of the previous videos, we started down here at the dam, we worked our way all the way up the east side, and then we started working our way back down the west side on the last video and we ended right here where that exclamation point is. We also did five Google Earth videos. Uh, this will be our fourth offshore video. So there's a whole series for Grand Lake. If you missed it, just go look at the Lake Breakdown playlist out on our channel and you will be able to get the entire Lake Breakdown for you. It should be a good one for you guys to watch. So let's go ahead and zoom in here and let's start right here. And we'll work our way back down this west side and hopefully finish this thing up today. So as we move down in here, the first thing I like is I like this really nice point that comes out here. It's almost a hump. I guess you could say it's a hump, like an underwater island, because there's a little saddle there. And you've got really good breaks off the edges of both sides of them. So those definitely look like they have some potential. Now, paying a kind of attention to this big river channel swing out here. I was just out here looking to see if I could see anything. It all looks pretty deep, but you get up here, you got a pretty decent little point that's up here. Someone actually put a mark there as well. So there might be a brush pile or something like that in that area. You could also move over here and check out this road bed that's right here. That could have some potential as well. All right, so let's move on down and see what else we can find. We've got some pretty decent little points right here. Probably should have marked this one right here. It's right on the river channel swing. It's really bluffy. It's very steep right here, but it does taper off off to this side. So maybe looking right here in this area, that could be a good area to look. You know, any of these points that are touching this river channel swing, you'll want to take a look at. Over here, you've got these break walls too, which we, we talked about on Google Earth, but those are right up against the river channel swing too. So those could be good little break walls to take a look at. And then we're going to stay on this side, right? Because we already covered the, uh, the east side. Uh, but I don't know if I covered that right there or not. I think I missed that. So there were those, those brick walls were right there. Then I missed that little point right there. This is another one of those little transition areas I was telling you about where it gets, it comes off that really steep, bluffy type river channel swing and then goes right into somewhat of a flat or something like that. Typically it's a transition area, but it's also a very high percentage areas to catch some fish. So right there where I put that mark at. All right, let's move on down here, show you guys where I'm at, about, eh, I don't know. Here's Serenity Point Resort is over here, and Harborview Marine is here, and I'm somewhere right around in this area, so uh, I don't know. We'll figure it out here in a second. Now I've already lost myself. There's the River Channel Swing. Now I'm going to come back over here. Again, another point. This point's got a pretty flat top on it and then a pretty quick drop, uh, but definitely something I would, I would take a look at. Then we're going to move down here. We're going to follow that river channel swing down here. Here's the Coves Golf Club, Bass Hollows in there. Hopefully you guys are figuring out where I'm at now. I'm going to move on down the river channel. Now, even though I didn't mark these things, you know, you're definitely going to want to find any of these points or anything like that that come out in here. If you can find any of them, they're going to be worthy of just going and taking a look at just because they're so close to that river channel. Now we're going to come here. Finally, we get into a nice little point here that's got a nice flat top. There's that tapering stuff that I was telling you about. So right in here could be a nice high percentage area to take a look at. Then we're gonna swing around here. We're gonna go up into this, this cove up here where Arrowhead is. Now there's gonna be quite a bit of stuff in here that we could have we could have marked, right? But I'm I'm gonna just go up and try to hit kind of the higher percentage type stuff that I found in here. So as I get up in here, hopefully I can find something in here. Uh, moved up here. 
following kind of following this creek bed it's way out here in the middle but it finally does come up here and swing right up against this point right here so that point is definitely going to come into play and then moving up here it's coming close to the docks you've also got a secondary point it's right in here too that you can look at i don't know if i saw too much back up in here from an offshore stuff i, I will say uh, submerge bridge there too you can take a look at and you've got some interesting stuff going on over here with some shallow flats and stuff like that and you've also got this little bridge that's back here too now one thing that we haven't talked about and i guess i could talk about it right now since uh since we're probably going to finish out this video today is that you know this I, i've talked about it a lot in the beginning videos but this lake is known for dock fishing um, and so really offshore might not be the thing on this lake i have no idea uh, i've never fished this lake before but i know i'm sure it is good just based on the contours um, you know, as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, man, there's another good spot right there too. But everywhere I look here, I can see good spots. But anyways, going back to the dock thing, this lake is known for fishing docks. And so if I was coming to this lake for the first time, or maybe I only had a couple days to fish it, I might not even mess with the offshore stuff. I might go straight to the docks, tie me on a spinnerbait, and then hit high percentage docks. And if you're like, okay, what's a high percentage docks? Well, obviously isolated docks, those are high percentage docks. And then docks like this, that are close to these river channel swings or creek beds are definitely, uh, definitely high percentage docks. So these three docks here, you got a whole line of docks that goes down here that's right on the edge of a creek bed, which makes them all just juicy type docks, right? Also docks that you can find that have a lot of rock around them. Those are gonna be good. Uh, you know, if you just followed this creek bed down and just said, okay, I'm only going to fish the docks where that creek bed comes close to it, you're going to have plenty of docks to fish. You can see here that creek bed runs right alongside a ton of them. And you're going to find that throughout the lake um, as we're talking. So I guess as we're doing this breakdown tonight, you know, just kind of pay attention. If you're, if you're looking for that dock thing, pay attention as I'm, as I'm going over because I do pay really close attention to these creek beds. You guys know that. Um, so you'll you'll see it and I'll see it too when those creek beds run up against those docks and when they do those are going to be again very high percentage docks to fish now I'm not going to say these docks over here aren't going to be good docks because pretty much all docks are good docks but if you only had so much time obviously you've got thousands of docks out here to fish focus on the ones that are closer to those creek channels and that'll put you in a, a higher percentage uh, spot to be able to catch some fish for sure all right let's keep moving out here we got a nice little point Got some road beds going on around this point too. You can see them down in here. They're pretty deep, uh, but that point looks looks pretty juicy. Uh, then we're gonna move back here. We're gonna come out here. This is the masthead marina, I guess that we're getting close to. But you can see here, there's a road bed that comes over here. This was just an interesting spot. It just, it caught my eye for some reason. One, I guess, cause it's off the point, but it has a really steep spot right here and then it tapers off. and kind of comes into a normal point here and all this is going on with a roadbed going through it and it's right by a dock as well. So that dock can be good and then any of those areas around that dock uh, can be good as well. All right, we'll keep moving down here. We're gonna swing down to this next little pocket. I'll show you, pull out here and show you guys where I'm at. I'm right here in the middle of the lake. So I'm getting close to the end here. So let's move up. We got another point right here, it has a nice little roadbed coming across it. So that one looks really good as well. And then really there's a, there's a couple things I probably could have marked back here. You've got some good little, little secondary points back in here. You've got this right in here. I don't even know what this is, but a really sharp little break going on right in this area. It's literally three foot and then it drops like 20 foot. Um, but I don't see any type of creek channels back in here. Here's a nice little secondary point back here as well. You know they're going to love to set up on that point before they get back up into these little pockets back up in here. Um, so all just kind of good looking stuff back in there, you know, nothing too crazy, but definitely some good looking stuff. There's some good looking, uh, good looking point that's right here. If we pull out here, notice the top of this is only like seven or eight feet and then it breaks pretty sharp, but nice little flat point right in here. And then you've got a good little rounded point going on here that has a really nice drop right by a road bed. So I marked that one for you guys for sure. We're gonna move this up, see what else we got. I'm gonna go into this little pocket. Nothing too too crazy in here, just a couple little points I wanted you to check out that had some really good breaks around them. Plus they've got the cover from the road bed too. So maybe check that out. And then this back in here kind of goes with everything I've been saying, all the, the videos and everything, but it's just at the end of where it gets steep and it starts to taper off 
into this big flat back here, just that little area right in there. All right, let's move up here. Let's go inside of this one. We're going up here to Willow Park Marina and Hammerhead Marina. I like that. Hammerhead. Sounds solid. All right, let's go up here and see what we can find. we got some road beds going on here. don't think I had anything back in there. But uh, remember when I said the, the river channels, right? We were looking for those seabed areas. These little creek beds are good areas too. And so <clears throat> if we look here, this creek bed's pretty close to these docks back here. It's running right up alongside of them. Uh, so that could put these docks right in here definitely into play as being some higher percentage type docks to look at. We're going to go back here. We've got this road bed that cuts across these two points. Again, nice little, little rounded point there. But then if we look over here to our left, these docks, right, with that creek bed, there's definitely something going on right in here. So definitely those docks are going to be docks to take a look at. Then we're going to take a look, pull out of there. We're going to come over here. Got some bluffy walls, definitely some deep water down here, 96, 100 foot. Uh, but coming back up here, if we get back into the shallow stuff, got a little shallow flat coming off this little point here. This one looks somewhat interesting. If I see, I think I might have zoomed in too much, but right here, just something to take a look at, right? It's not 100 foot. It's about the only area around here that's not just massively deep, but a nice little kind of flat area right in here as well as right in here with some pretty good drops. It's not too crazy uh, to me, high percentage stuff, but just something to take a look at. Another rounded point is close to uh, the river channel. And then here we've got a good little tapering point that comes off that's right there by the river channel swing as well. And so those points, always juicy points for sure. Then we're going to move down. We're going to talk about our very last waypoint for Grand Lake of the Cherokees. I can't believe we actually made it to the end. But here we go. We've got the main river channel around here, right? 120 something foot. But it tapers off right here on the outside of this little break wall. So maybe fish it around this break wall and around that point right in there. That can be a productive area for you. So again, guys, remember this is a, uh, a dock lake. Everybody talks about these dock lakes. So follow these little... Uh, Follow If you get Navionics mobile app like I have, just follow these little creek beds. And anywhere that creek bed touches those docks, you're going to want to look and fish those docks. And then anywhere you find, that's actually the river channel. I might have said creek bed there. These are little creek beds too that come up. And then you've got the little miniature creek beds. Those are going to be those little dotted blue lines that we saw earlier, like this right in here. Here's a creek bed. So it's not very deep. But I'm just going to look in here and just say, okay, where does that come close? Boom, those two docks and that dock's right on the outside edge of that creek bed. And so that's the kind of things you're going to look for when you're going to fish those docks. Of course, the other thing you could do as well is you could just turn on your side scan and just go down and side scan those docks and find out which docks have cover underneath them, you know, brush pile, stuff like that, and then only fish those docks with the cover. Uh, you got to do something because you have way too many docks here to be able to cover the entire lake. So you've got to kind of narrow down your focus, but that's kind of how I would do it. Anyways, guys, I hope this has helped you a ton. I hope you enjoy fishing out on Grand Lake. Please make sure to go check out our website, simplisticfishing.com. We have over 190 lakes broken down now across the United States. We have a lot of them in Oklahoma. We have a ton in Texas. That's where we originated from. We've got Alabama, uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, Kentucky, Tennessee, you name it, we've got them out there. So go check it out. And if you find one that I don't have out there that you want me to put out there, just uh, submit your, your question there on the website and I'll take care of you and get that out there for you. So until next time, guys, I hope you catch your PB. Take it easy.